to start. As we once again hear these words of Jesus' blessedness and happiness, that those who humble themselves will be exalted, that we are called to lift and ease the burdens of others and to liberate those who bear the weights of this world, we are all blessed. And this is what saints do. They find freedom and fulfillment in service to others. They walk the walk. As St. Francis said, preach the gospel always, and if you have to, use words. Amen. Pastoral prayer now, right? Yeah. I lost my paper. All right. So now we pray together. I've had a few um, prayer concerns raised this week. I know that Diane's sister Phyllis, um, I believe, is home. Uh, she has supplemental oxygen now, but obviously prayers for her continued healing and help. I'm sure she has a lot of doctor's appointments coming up. So we pray for her and Diane. We also pray for Maureen Nelson, um, who recently got a cancer diagnosis, and for her partner, Bill Hipp, who is in the process of coming home um, from rehab, but certainly having your own medical issues and then also a partner who's ill is a lot. So we pray for them and for the entire Speed Hip family as they support them. And we pray for Kathy Tureski's family. Her father is um, returned home from the hospital recently and is not doing um, as well as they would like. She may possibly have to travel, thank you so much, might have to travel down to North Carolina and we know. One of the outdoor service challenges. We know that traveling at this time can be really challenging. So we pray for Kathy, for her dad and her mom and her family and for safe travel. We also pray for those who have recently entered living assisted living facilities. It's a tough time to make that transition and a tough time for their loved ones who aren't able to see them right away. Um, and for all those who have been confined to such a facility for a while, it's a really tough challenge for all of those families. So let us pray. Living God, in whom there is no shadow or change, we thank you for the gift of life eternal. And for all those who have served, served you well, now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints remembered and forgotten, for those dear souls most precious to us. Today we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered the glory. We bless you for their life and love and rejoice for them. All is well and all manner of things will be well. God of Jesus and our God, mindful of all those choice souls who have gone on ahead of us, teach us and all disciples of every race and place to follow their example to the best of our ability, to feed the poor in body or spirit, to support and comfort the mourners and the repentant, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crises, to affirm those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers. Let us understand what it means to follow Jesus, to act upon the words that he gives us. Let us clearly recognize what it means to be called the children of God and to know we are to be your saints neither by our own inclination nor in our own strength, but simply by the call and the healing holiness of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our mission is to engage in God's mission to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, and wipe the tears from every eye. This is accomplished through our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. And we remember this morning to give generously so that God's will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now for our minute for mission, we have Christine Haddad and Deborah Busking who are going to talk to us about Thanksgiving baskets and adopt a family. Good morning. The coronavirus unfortunately has put the kibosh on a lot of our church activities that we enjoy. I'm going to particularly miss harvest dinner, the Christmas bazaar, Christmas caroling, the Santa brunch, um, you know, all these activities that we enjoy. However, we are, we can feel sorry for ourselves but we can look around and realize that we here are very blessed. But there are people in our community that still are having struggling. And so the deacons, including Deborah, and we are going to continue with our Adopt-A-Family program and our Thanksgiving baskets. 
So this year, unfortunately, the youth group cannot stand outside the grocery stores and ask people to contribute, so it's going to be up to our congregation to dig a little deeper. Now, since the church is not open, there's two options. Kathy Tereski wrote for the youth group that we can gather our food and tie it in a bag, put it by the door, but there's also going to be this box, which I don't know if you can see here. It's a tote with a lid, and it's going to be on the manse porch, so you can bring food anytime during the week, go up on the porch, just put it in, shut the lid, and it should be nice and safe from any critters. The other thing is also that Lynn Jones is uh, still has cards if you want to instead buy like a gift, a grocery card that we have, we have been putting them in the baskets every year. We usually do about 12, so depending on our generosity, we hope that you will contribute. Um, the one more thing before I have Deborah talk to you, we are going to have, the Presbyterian women are going to have a wreath drive-by sale. And it's a little different than what we did. The details are in the tidings. If you have any questions, ask me, Donna Williams, Jenny Wagner, or Eloise Carter. So here's Deborah with the details of the, yes, Louise. Uh, when would you like the uh, grocery? By, thank you. By November 22nd, Sunday, November 22nd. I'm going to have this here and also uh, every church Sunday we're going to have it here at the church and then I'll put it back across the street. Thank you, Louise. Good point. Good morning. Um, well, like Chris said, you know, because of the coronavirus, we're all adapting and, and really doing pretty well for most of us. Um, but there are a lot of people who aren't. And we, there's still a great demand, maybe greater than usual, for people who are in need of gifts uh, for themselves, for their children, for their families, um, for Christmas. I'm here earlier than ever before, but that's part of uh, the whole COVID thing, is that shopping is not the same as usual either. There's going to be a lot of online shopping, and I know deliveries are delayed, so we thought it would be a good idea to get the individuals out to you as soon as possible to give you extra weeks to really find something nice to, to make the holiday special for somebody. Um, there's also some, the, the drop-off place is still the same, um, although in the same building, but it's in the classrooms. It's all on the card, but it's in the classrooms downstairs. It's not in the big gymnasium because I believe they're using that for classroom space. Um, and the dates are a little bit earlier. The drop-off dates are from December 4th through 14th. Um, again, the times are specified on the card. If you can't get there during those times, you can, I don't know if you can leave the gifts at the church. I think in the church office you can still leave gifts. Um, or call me and I'll make arrangements to get them somehow and get them over there. Um, but do that before the 13th because the 14th is like the last day. Um, so we can't put the names out like we used to um, and all the different sheets, but after today's service or online, um, you can contact me online um, at dbusking at gmail.com and I will get you an individual. I'll just email it to you. But today I also have them with me. Um, unfortunately, it can't be quite as specific as we were and asking for a specific kind of person, age, but we can help a little bit that way. But there's a, a diverse group that are in need, so please give generously. Thank you. people. We carry your presence. Use us and our gifts to accomplish your mission in the world. Multiply our effort to meet every need. This we pray in the name of Christ, whom with you and the Holy Spirit reign in our hearts and lives. One God, now and forever. Amen. And now for our sacrament of communion. 
Jesus tells us again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and who believe, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. We're all invited to this table, which is quite large this morning. No matter where you are coming from, we take this time to remember the story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to gather at his table. Let us pray. Thank you, most holy God, for meeting us in this simple meal. May your presence within us ripple beyond us, ever expanding, until the day when you gather all your saints from the four winds to share in your eternal banquet. In all our words and actions, may your name be praised, now and forevermore. We remember that no matter where we might gather or what circumstances might separate us, that we are still one body in Christ, holding one another in love as Jesus holds us. Amen. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread. And you can take your bread, too. And after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Whenever you eat this, wherever you are, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after dinner. And Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, descend your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape, whether on this table or in the homes of your people, so that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ. Pour out your spirit upon us so that we might be reflections of your likeness in a hurting world so that others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the bread of heaven given for you. Amen. the cup of blessing poured out for you. Amen. Now let us pray together. Merciful Savior, dwell forever in our hearts. Inspire us with your purity. Strengthen us with your might. Perfect us in your ways. Guide us in your truth. Unite us to yourself and to your whole church by your holy mysteries so that we may overcome evil and be wholly devoted to your service and conform to your will, all for the sake of your glory. Amen.
as a flowing stream through a parched desert, pouring the love of God upon the hearts and lives of all you meet so that hope might take root and blossom. As you go, know that the God who created you, the Christ who redeems you, and the Spirit who empowers you is with you today and evermore. Amen. Amen. 